day. This is Bill Warrell along with Mickey Herskowitz. Texas leading TCU 20 to 14. It was a big third quarter for Texas. But whatever the final outcome, we have to believe that the Purple Frogs at TCU are on the road to respectability under Coach Jim Wacker, playing an a absolutely tenacious game against a number two ranked Texas University team. Anthony Gully pitching back to Egypt Allen, and uh, he loses. Well, he gains a couple of yards on the play before Richard Peavy wraps him up. Jim Moore really putting the pressure that time on Anthony Gully, and it'll bring up fourth down for TCU and everybody on the west side of the stadium up and applauding that Texas defense. Well, the Texas defense has just been a steel wall against TCU this afternoon. The Frogs have a game breaker in James Manus, and the remaining 14 minutes and 50 some odd seconds are going to have to throw the ball. James Gargas has punted seven times for a 38 yard average. This time he gets a whale of a kick away. Kelvin Epps feels it going back backwards at his 15 yard line trying to come up field but he can't go anywhere he stopped at the 20 yard line and that's where Texas will have it Frank Wills number 46 for TCU applied the stop on Kelvin Epps a 60 yard kick by James Gargas Gargas came into the game with a 44 yard punting average his opponent John Telchik came in with a 45.5 average and that shows you how important the kicking game is. And TCU has yet to get a yard through the air and that's just astounding. We said in the pregame Manus was an outstanding receiver but we also said Mossy Cade and Jerry Gray do a pretty good job of putting a blanket over him. They've certainly done it today. Terry Orr, Michael Brown, the running backs, Brian in motion, Morshell, hands off to Brown, he's got running room, across the 25, out to the 30-yard line, a gain of nine on the play before Alonda Smith and Kyle Clifton wrap him up for TCU, it'll be a yard shy of a Texas first down. The Texas running backs are really beginning to move with authority now, as you see, Michael Brown, is that Brown? Yes, he is. Michael Brown will break loose for a first down, for almost a first down. Second down and one. Give it to the up back, Terry Orr, who struggles for a Texas first down to about the 33-yard line. Kyle Clifton. Texas zero. There you see number 37, Terry Orr, out of Abilene. When you, got, when you have to get one or two yards, uh, give it to Orr, the 230 pounds, he can fall forward for you. You know, even though the Texas offense has not been real productive yet today, or in recent weeks, their backs seem to get bigger as the game goes on, Dan. All that poise really helps all the seniors on that Texas team. Marshall on the option, he elects to keep. Marshall, keep it. And a great play made that time by Ronzel Brewer of TCU number 87. Brewer played off a pretty good Texas block to make the tackle. This is a season, Mickey, where we see a lot of teams rebuilding. We talked about the freshmen at TCU. We know about the young people at Houston and at Arkansas and everywhere else. Texas, however, loaded with a senior football team, and that kind of poise Fred Akers has with those seniors really shows through in the late going. Brown now has carried 13 times for 49 yards. Second down, eight to go. Hand off again to Michael Brown. He gets up to about the 39. Flag on the play, and it looks like it may be offensive holding against Texas. John Thomas, the tackler for TCU. What is really rather perplexing about the game so far is the fact that we haven't seen TCU on offense do anything. There are two touchdowns coming on defense. Unable to, to uh, accomplish anything in a passing way. So it'll be, it's going to be a big one marked off against Texas, 15 yards for a personal foul. Let's listen and a to dead ball, personal foul, offense, offense, third down. That's the sixth penalty for Texas today, amounting to 72 yards. TCU with eight penalties for 50 yards. Texas has done very well in third down conversions. TCU has to hold them here, has to get the ball back in somewhat decent field position and try to get some offense generated. It was third and five. It's now third and 20 from the 24. In motion is Kelvin Epps. Look for the reverse. He fakes it. Morshell does. Looking long. And he's sacked from behind by number 76, David Buller. 
out of West Covina, California. A loss of seven on the play, but Morshell had all day. TCU has made some big plays and made them when they had to have the most. And none may loom larger than that play if TCU can get the ball around midfield and get a drive of any kind going. That was the seventh, or the 15th, let's see, that was third down conversions and they failed to convert on that time. Telchik on the three yard line gets a pretty good punt away. TCU's going to let it hit. That was a mistake. And now Thomas feels it. Gets back upfield to about the 45. Let's call it the 47-yard line before Texas buries him under some burnt orange jerseys. Joe Monroe made the tackle for Texas. But it is good field position, Mickey, for TCU. A punt of 42 yards for John Telchick. Thomas haunted, of course, by his fumble on the 12-yard line that led to the go-ahead touchdown by Texas. And you can see his uncertainty about fielding that ball. That wind is really must be playing tricks down there on the field. It's coming from the south at about 20 miles per hour, but it seems to have a swirling effect when you're down on the floor of Memorial Stadium. Ball at the 46-yard line. Gully going across the middle. Manus at the 30-yard line of Texas. Mossy Cade wraps him up. On a 23-yard pass play. From Anthony Gully to James Manus. For the first time today, we saw TCU try to throw the ball with a pattern that started over the middle of the field and curled to the outside rather than starting at the sideline or short yardage passes. Also, Mickey, a game on first down, which I thought was smart because that way Texas wasn't able to come at you with that first seven. The first TCU pass completion of what has been a long and confusing afternoon. First and 10 for TCU. Handoff to Egypt Allen inside the Texas 30, a gain of three. Mike Buchanan on the tackle for Texas, number 92. Out of St. Louis, he's 6'3", 260 pounds, a senior. Begin to see the importance of the two-point conversion for Texas. Now a six-point lead means that even to get a tie, TCU would have to get two field goals. Egypt Allen comes out of the game, Frank Manus and Dwayne May to the right side, second down and eight. Anthony Gully cannot hear the signals. A Texas student section is right on the line of scrimmage, and Texas calls a timeout. Yeah, and of course, that's where the Texas band is assembled, right? between the 20 and the 40 yard lines. And if uh, they've been having problem hearing the plays earlier, you can imagine what it's going to be There they are, and they just put up a deafening roar when TCU came to the line of scrimmage. I think Gully was going to go ahead and run the play, Mickey, but then his center, Mike Flynn, said, no, you don't. I can't hear you. And with the ball inside the Texas 30-yard line, this is not where you want to take chances with your play call. We said earlier, Mickey, of course, uh, Doug Dawson injured and unable to play today, but uh, it's unfortunate that his injury coincided with the announcement last week that Doug is one of the 12 finalists for the Lombardi Award, which is given away every year in Houston. The senior from Houston graded out over 94% in each of his games this year, and he will be sorely missed, of course, by Texas, but they hope to get him back in time for a bowl game. Incidentally, it's Dad's Day here at Memorial Stadium in Austin, and uh, one of the dads on the TCU side of the field is Bob Lilly has a young man in uniform today for the Horned Frogs. I bet TCU wishes they could suit him up. Here comes Gully on the option. June James wraps him up at the 25-yard line. Ray Woodard also in on the play. A gain of four for James, Anthony Gully. The so now we've got a critical third down play for TCU and for Texas for that matter. Third and let's call it uh, a long three or a short four yards. Third and four. The ball on the Texas 25-yard line. Egypt Allen runs in with a play for Anthony Gully. They better hurry and get it off. 12 seconds left on the 25-second clock, and you don't want a delay of game they here. They're not going to get They're this not going to get off. this play off, and Gully calls a timeout. Only five seconds remained on the 25-second clock, and 
It was such a big play, I think Jim Wacker had trouble calling it on the sideline. They didn't get it called fast enough, and now they'll talk it over. You know, when you're playing against a great defense like Texas, you don't get much opportunity to get down that close to the goal line. And you know, Bill, every team that Texas plays now is just fired sky high and, and playing up to whatever capacity it has. So for Texas, literally, it's like walking through a minefield. There are no longer any soft touches on the Texas schedule. When you're this close to an unbeaten season and a, night, a high national ranking, possibly even a national championship. Texas better get ready for Baylor next week because, uh, in my opinion, I think Grant Taft has done one of the super coaching jobs this year with the Baylor Bears. That's right. Baylor has a real strong chance to be selected for a bowl game, and uh, traditionally they play... Uh, make an, an enormous emotional effort against the Texas team. Okay, here's a key play for the game for TCU. Third down and four from the Texas 25. Quick pass out to May. He evades one tackler, and does he get the first down? I think he does. He dives to the 20-yard line for a gain of five, and I think TCU will have the first down. June James and Jeff Lighting, the tacklers for Texas. Lighting, bring in May, number 17 five. The execution wasn't exactly what TCU wanted, but Gully did a good job of getting it off to May. Now he, he hesitates a little bit just toward the 25-yard line, and, or 20-yard line, and that could have been disastrous, but... He really made a move on Craig Curry of Texas. A little stutter step finally got him over. May and Manus come left. Wide receiver, first and 10 for TCU. Gully, he's going to keep inside the 20 to about the 17-yard line. A gain of three. June James with the tackler, along with Blake Bronner of Texas. But you know, that time, uh, Texas reacted quick. I thought for a moment Gully had more running room on that option. Texas can close a hole faster than just about any team you will see this year. They have such great reactions in their secondary and linebacker. There you see a big edge going to the Longhorns in the first down department. Gully will have David Davis, Egypt Allen in the backfield, Manus and May flank left. Gully with a straight handoff to Egypt Allen. And he stops for a gain of two at the 15-yard line by Tony DeGrate, number 99. Lighting number 60 also in on that So TCU has gotten conservative in its play calling now. And we're coming up to another critical third down situation. Third and four, right at the 15-yard line. Power against power. TCU going against that tough front five, six, seven of Texas. Football! A costly mistake for Anthony Gully and TCU as he fumbles and falls on the ball. For a loss of four on the play, Ray Woodard applied the pressure. And it'll bring up fourth down, and Wacker will not go with a field goal. He's going to go for it. And TCU is only two for 13 in third down conversion today. And, of course, this is going to be the first, or really the second, uh, the first fourth down conversion. They've had an opportunity to try. Fourth down and eight. TCU has to get to the Texas 10-yard line for a first down. Gully with a big rush. Here it comes from the backside. He gets it off, but he cannot complete it. Oh, my. Eric Holly, Jeff Lighting, Tony DeGray. They just smothered Anthony Gully on that play, and he was unable to get the pass off. Well, he got it off, but he was unable to find his target. Well, he was hit as he let the ball go, and uh, had he had another split second or had he released the ball a little bit earlier, he might have had the completion. He just holds it too long. You see him taken down by Holly and Lighting. Richard Peavy also in Peavy. here, crashing from his strong safety position. And I think he was looking for Dwayne May, and he just waited a second too long, or it may have been just a little bit a step too late for May to get in position for the for the completion. Two of 13 on third down conversion, Five eight of 16 minutes. for Texas. The Longhorns take over at their own 19. Michael Brown and Ronnie Robinson in the I formation. This is Brown on the carry to about the 20-yard line. Rob Morshell still in the ballgame quarterbacking Texas. He has completed one of eight passes for 17 yards. He's had one interception. And on the day, Morshell has rushed eight times for 24 yards. Jim Wacker may second-guess himself later about not going for the three points. But you have to wonder how many times TCU 
can expect to get in scoring position against Texas, and they almost had to go for the touchdown. Second down and nine. Morshell rolls right. He's got some blockers at the 20. Cuts inside to the 25 to about the 27 yard line. A gain of seven before Kyle Clifton applies the hit for TCU. And it looks to be about a yard shy of a Texas first down. Clifton, number 89, is on the stop. Morshell with a wave of blockers rolling to his right. Makes his cut up field. Runs out right past and through one TCU tackle before he's brought down at the 28. There's nothing fancy about this offense. Quarterback gets the ball and rolls right. Now that looks like something from the old 40s and 50s. Just sheer power for Texas. They try to put more numbers on that side of the football than you have. Third down and one. Listen to the helmets clash as Michael Brown dives ahead to the 30-yard line for a Texas first down. Robert Lyles, Alanda Smith, and on the tackle for TCU. Michael Brown, who had 15 carries for 53 yards going into that play, and now picked up three more. 56 for 16 attempts. TCU is going to have to stop Texas at the line of scrimmage because you don't expect the Longhorns now to risk putting the ball in the air. Michael Brown averaging about three and a half yards per carry today. Ronnie Robinson down in front of Brown. This time the handoff to Robinson. Bulls behind the blocks of David Jones, Burton Junkin, and Casey Smith for a gain of three. Robert Lyles and Andy Pitts on the tackle for TCU. But now Texas just grinding out the yardage on the ground, content to let this clock run down. 6-17 left to play in the game. Texas with a 20 to 14 lead over TCU. Robinson has carried four times today now for 49 yards, a 12-yard average. The big one, of course, the 40-yard touchdown run in the third quarter. Billboy Bryant in motion. And off again to Robinson over left guard. Maybe a gain of one on the play. Kent Trammell and Kevin Dean, two freshmen. Trammell, a freshman out of Corsicana. Dean, a freshman out of Newton, Texas, make the tackle for TCU. You could just about drop a poncho over that TCU defense right now. The Horn Frogs are punched in, packed in so tightly. They are bringing everybody to the line of scrimmage. Their deepest defensive back isn't probably more than six, seven yards off the line of scrimmage. Block running down, 527, left to play in the game. Third down and four for Texas. Pitch back on the option. Michael Brown, and he can't get to the 40-yard line. That's where he needed to go for the Texas first down. A gain of only three. Alonda Smith runs him out of bounds. A dangerous flip back. You know, to me, Mickey, this is as dangerous as a forward pass. It right really here. is, and especially, you know, those kind of overhanded lob-type pitches. But he pulled it under control, could not get the first down, and forced out of the 38-yard line of Texas, and Texas is going to have to punt. Well, that young TCU defense again meets the challenge as Telchik will fall back on his 25-yard line. He's punted five times today for a 37-yard average. He'll be punting into that stiff breeze, remember, coming out of the south. A wobbly kick fielded by Jones at the 35-40. He's up to about the 45-yard line. John Thomas, that is, number six. A 29-yard punt by Telchik and a 12-yard return by John Thomas. So now TCU with 4.33 left to play has the ball on its own 45-yard line. And this could be the last chance for TCU to win this game. Let's get the stats from our stat crew on what TCU has completed and how many passing attempts. But you don't have to be a wizard to guess that they're going to be throwing now. They're going to be throwing to James Manus. Manus and May come to the left side. Anthony Gully will keep it on the short side of the field. A gain of about six across midfield in the Texas Territory. The tackler was Jerry Gray along with Ty Allard. Allard out of Houston Northbrook High School. Jerry Gray out of Lubbock. Well, he didn't throw it on that one, but... What he is going to be doing, if he's going to wait for a third down passing situation, he is going to have everybody but Bevo coming at him. <laughs> and Bevo didn't really look that concerned. I they, think they haven't needed Bevo. Bevo's seen a lot of these close ones. <laughs> Gully is two for five for 28 yards. Has only thrown the ball five times. That yeah. time, Gully hands off to Egypt Allen, a gain of about two. 
Ed Williams and Ray Woodard wrap him up, and that's a lot of beef right there. Williams came into the game with 60 tackles, leading the down lineman for Texas. He's out of Odessa, 250 pounds. Woodard, 270 pounds. Another third down conversion situation. TCU two for 13 on third down. The clock winding down. Four minutes left to play now. Inside of four, 358. Manus and May go to the right side. Third and three for TCU. And off again. No, he's going to keep. Gully's got running room. 45 at the 40. He flips back to his running back. At number 29, James Calhoun, who gets it down to the 31-yard line. An 18-yard play for the Horn Frogs. And just a sensationally executed play by TCU as Gully keeps... And you don't, you see that he, he, it is designed, that he sees Calhoun, and he is getting himself in position to make the pitch, and he does. Beautifully timed. Calhoun picks up additional yards. Ty Allard applied the pressure to Anthony Gully, and he flipped it back, and Jerry Gray ended up making the tackle on Calhoun. But, boy, that was good thinking. Heady, heady play by the young junior out of Dallas, South Oak Cliff. First and 10, TCU threatening on the Texas 30-yard line. Gully rolls right. He's got some running room. He's going to throw long. He's got May in the end zone, and he drops it. Oh, Richard Peavy got a hand on it. It was spectacular defense by the deep Texas secondary as Gully had the pass where he wanted it. You see him rolling out, cuts loose, goes off balance, and a terrific pass it is. And there you see the leap by Peavy. Richard Peavy deflected it just enough to where Dwayne May couldn't make the catch. Now, May was turned around, or he really would have been in perfect position. Had that not been tipped by Peavy, it would have been a certain six points. 3.39, left to play in the game. Texas leading at 20-14. to 14. Second down and 10. It's time to hand off up the middle to Egypt Allen. A gain of only two on the play to about the 28. Tony DeGrate and Eric Holly make the tackle. Here we are, third down again, and they have tried on 14 occasions, succeeded on just three. The last time, of course, was their third successful attempt. You don't like to second-guess the play calling of the Frogs, but on first down, they go for all of it when they don't need all of it. On second down, they run a power play. This is a do-or-die drive, obviously. Jim Wacker has decided if he scores, there will be no more time left because now we are at the three-minute mark. This is the last chance for TCU. Third down, eight to go. Gully throws across the middle. He has his man, number 85, Greg Arterberry. At the Texas 16-yard line, Richard Peavy, Fred Acorn make the tackle, but not before. A TCU first down with 2.52 to play. The Horns better make a stand here. That number two national ranking is in danger. A 14-yard completion, and what more could you ask for? Just what TCU needed and just what the, what the doctors ordered. Hey, and Manus coming left. Anthony Gully at the TCU controls. First and 10, handoff. Up the middle to Egypt Allen, who squirms inside the 15 to about the 13. A gain of three before Ed Williams makes the tackle for Texas. The clock still running at the south end. 2.20 left to play. Texas leading by only six points over TCU. This drive started back on the TCU 45-yard line. And is now down on the Texas 13. This is it. They don't have a two-minute warning, but I'm telling you, that's all that's left in this ball game. Two minutes, second down, eight to go. Gully keeps. And a great defensive play made by Jeff Lighting and Ty Allard at the 12-yard line. A gain of one. Allard, number 48, Lighting, number 16. 140 now left in the game. TCU not worrying about stopping the clock. This is it. Wacker's going for the whole ball of wax right here. Either he scores and wins the game or ties it or he loses it. Third down, eight to go. The ball on the Texas 13-yard line. Gully tackled in the backfield by Ty Allard. And now, with 111, 110 on the clock, time ticking off, TCU will call a timeout. And if you've got to leave it up to that great Texas defense, what more could the Orange Boosters ask? TCU now coming over to the field. Here it is, Mickey. 
Fourth down. Five to go. The ball on the 11. What is Jim Wacker calling? more timeouts. Well, TCU just uses, used its last timeout, and of course, it, it projects again the second guess of a moment ago. Had TCU elected to go for the field goal, now they would be faced with the decision of whether to play for a tie or try to score the winning points. This is the fifth game we've done this season for the University of Texas. Mickey, we have seen Texas come up with some big goal line stands, but probably none as important as this one right now. Fourth and five from the 11-yard line, and really their whole season hangs on this play. It may not be too much to, to project, to predict. I don't think Texas really cares about its timeout. The Horn Frogs, of course, now cannot stop the clock. They have no timeouts remaining. The scoreboard tells you the story. Texas with 17 third quarter points to take the lead, but TCU now on the do or die play. This is it. Jim Wacker has the only talked it over. The only thing that surprises me is how little TCU tried to throw the ball on those last two drives. In both cases, getting the ball in good position. This drive started at the TCU 45. Okay, here comes Anthony Gully. He's talked to Jim Wacker. Jeff Lighting has come in. He's talked to Fred Akers. There he is. Look at him. He can't even look at it. He is in a Jim prayerful. Jim Wacker is saying a little prayer. Here it comes. The play of the game. Manus and May flank to the right side. Fourth down. Five to go. The ball on the Texas 11. Gully throws it across the middle. And a great play. Fred Acorn. Well, out of Rotan, Texas. The play you had to figure they were going to try. Gully trying to get the ball into James Manus, and Acorn is there for the coverage. What a fantastic defensive play by that senior out of Rotan, Texas. That ball I thought was in there. It Mick. really looked like it was a completion, and what a finish that was going to bring up, but what a finish we may have just seen. And for Texas, how true it rings that from, what is it, small acorns, mighty oaks grow. I don't know. Well, acorn got a real big hug from acres. Yes, I'll tell you did. that. 104 left to play. Texas now will just try to run this clock out. TCU with no timeouts left. What an exciting game today at Memorial Stadium. We thought we had a whole hummer. We had a lot. <laughs> I said Manus. I think it was Dwayne May who was the intended receiver. Let's take another look at it, okay? I believe it was May. Yeah. Okay, here's Gully behind his blockers, rolling out to his right, looking for his receiver, and running a curl pattern over the middle. It is Dwayne May, and Acorn is right there to tip the ball just as it reaches him. How did, a how did Acorn get his arm in there? You know, the defensive backs for Texas have made some great plays this year. Richard Peavy made a great play against Lance McElhenney well, uh, in the SMU game. I know you saw some gymnasts the other night, but you won't see much gy more gymnastic athletic skill than what you see in that Texas secondary. Well, we've talked about it all year. 20 seconds left. That's it. That's going to be the last play of the game. We've talked about it all year What great athletes, Mossy Cade, Craig Curry, Jerry Gray, and Fred Acorn are, and they proved it on that one. It has to be the greatest secondary in America in college football. And well, they're calling it, they're ticking off the clock. What can you say for the TCU Horned Frogs of Jim Rackler? What a heroic and Herculean effort, leading at one point, 14 to three at the half. Two chances to win the game in the fourth quarter and coming up short. Well, they know what Jim Wacker can do, Fred Akers does. Right down the road at San Marcos, he led Southwest Texas State to two national titles. Red Acres lets out a big sigh of relief, puts up the hook'em horn sign as the band really toots the eyes of Texas very appreciably today. The final score, Texas 20, TCU 14, the Longhorns protecting their number two ranking. Mickey Herskowitz and I will be back with some final comments right after this brief timeout. This is Home Sports Entertainment. Four consecutive weeks of Dallas Mavericks basketball coming in November on HSE against Ice, Might, and Height. First Friday, November 11th, the Mavericks host Iceman George Gervin and the San Antonio Spurs, a perennial playoff team. Then Thursday the 17th, 
mighty Daryl Dawkins, Otis Birdsong, and the New Jersey Nets come to town. The Spurs return to Reunion Arena Tuesday the 22nd, and the HSE cameras will be there live to bring you all the action. Plus, Wednesday the 30th, we'll round off the month with another look at sensational rookie Ralph Sampson and the Houston Rockets. Be cool and watch exclusive coverage of Dallas Mavericks basketball live on Home Sports Entertainment, the hottest ticket around. A relieved 65,000-plus filing out of Memorial Stadium today. The University of Texas Longhorns protecting their number two ranking by holding off a stubborn TCU team 20-14 to today. And Mickey Herskowitz, those cockroaches that Daryl Royal used to fear, came back to haunt the horns today. It was a mighty scare that TCU threw into this great Texas football team, and the analysts can second-guess and find fault with the Texas offense, but the fact remains that the Longhorns now are undefeated nine straight heading for a Southwest Conference Championship and not dismissing the possibility of finishing number one in the land, Bill. Let's check the statistics now, the final game statistics. TCU with eight first downs, seven of those coming in the second half. Texas with a big edge there in the rushing department, 215 yards, and an eight-yard advantage in the passing department. I know, Mickey, you were telling me uh, during that last time out, you were surprised TCU didn't throw the ball more. Well, that seemed to be their best chance to, to pull off this uh, colossal upset of this great Texas football team. But, of course, circumstances dictated uh, the strategy of Coach Jim Wacker, the fact that TCU most of the game going from very poor field position and facing what had been a, a, a very powerful wind in their faces. So TCU uh, driving twice in the fourth quarter, uh, in scoring range, unable to bring it off, going down to defeat 20-14, to 14, but a rather uh, gallant performance it was for the Horned Frogs. Mickey, I think there were three plays in this game that uh, had a great bearing on the outcome. The first play coming with just seconds left in the first half. Rick McIver in for Texas, and he's trying to hit his tight end, Bobby Mishaw, across the middle. But Byron Linwood stepped in to intercept and returned for TCU 60 yards, and that made it 14-3 TCU at halftime. Mighty big play for the Horn Frogs, and that for the first time they were thinking they were going to win. Then the big play, Ronnie Robinson, as he busts off left guard, his first carry of the day. You know, he wasn't supposed to play today. He was injured, and he goes 40 yards down the left sideline to get Texas back into the game, and then this the last play for TCU. Needing five yards for a first down, fourth down, the final play of the game. Anthony Gully looking for Dwayne May across the middle and watch Fred Acorn as he just gets his left arm in there to deflect the pass away and protect that number two ranking for the Horns. Three plays that turned it around and it came down to a great athletic play by Fred Acorn. Well, a great effort it was for Texas defense, and again, the Longhorns, the number one ranked defensive team in the nation, and they showed why. Uh, TCU scoring twice on their defense. Uh, Texas giving the ball up on a fumble and an interception for two long touchdown plays, and it was a strange game at that point in the first half. TCU had not made a first down of their own making, the only first down coming on a penalty. The Texas offense again struggling today, Mickey, but I think Fred Akers said today that he's going back with Rob Morshell. He won the first five games of the season uh, handily with Morshell at quarterback. He switched to Todd Dodge. The offense began to sputter, but I think today we saw Akers go back to Morshell, and I have a feeling that's going to be his quarterback the rest of the way. That, occur of course, was one of the key moves in the second half, the, the decision by Fred Akers to stay with Rob Morshell. He had been shuttling three quarterbacks in the first half. Rob McIver in for one play, uh, Rick McIver one play, and of course that was a bombshell of a backfire that led to the TCU interception return for a touchdown. So um, Texas now girding itself for the final two games against Baylor and the Texas Aggies. Most people expecting a very one-sided and easy afternoon for the boys in orange, and it didn't turn out that way at all. But they protected that number two ranking and the undefeated record in the Southwest Conference as Texas heads for the Cotton Bowl on New Year's Day. Again, the final score, Texas 20, TCU 14. The executive producer of today's game has been Jack Stanfield. The director of productions, John McIntyre. The program producer has been Hillary Thornell. The game was produced and directed by Dave Ernst and the remote facility supplied by Continental Productions who did an excellent job today. We'd